it has really positioned me as a source of strength, someone that inspires trust in the industry and trust that they can come to this webinar or they can give me a call and ask, I need a glass supplier. Where can I find that? I'm going to give that to them. Are you using webinars to promote your brand or upcoming projects? Well, you might after this episode. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your interior design business? Then welcome to Wingnut Social, the podcast specifically designed to accelerate your business through increased social media presence, impactful online content, and translating industry experience into physical success. This is your design business tightly fastened. Now welcome the hosts of Wingnut Social, Darla Powell and Natalie Graff. Hey there, welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I'm your host, the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut, Darla, Green Tea, Powell, and I'm joined by Natalie, I swear it's just water graph. Natalie, how the hell are you? <laughs> it is just water, I swear. It's a little <laughs> early. I mean, come on now. <laughs> You're going to make people think that I'm an alky. Natalie, today you had your first Peloton tread workout. How was it? It was actually, I think, the best treadmill I've ever been on. And legit, right? I mean, yeah, this is legit. not sponsored. They, no. Peloton doesn't care who the hell we are. No, they don't. But I tell you <laughs> what, I have bad knees anyways, and I'll use it again. You know, I used to be a runner back in the day, and I used to run like seven-minute miles. And ever since I had a pulmonary embolism in 2004, my lungs just haven't been the same since. But I'm hopeful that this is going to get me in some good running shape. You know what? I think if you follow the instructions, because the instructors are really great, they're very encouraging. And when you want to just go ahead and walk, you're like, oh, dang it, I can't walk, you know? <laughs> but no, it's actually my first one. I love it. And I'm sure I'm going to do it again. Yeah, for sure. Would you say I'm obsessive? I'm pretty obsessed, right? You are extremely obsessed. I love the whole infrastructure. Listen, if someone tells you it's going to cure you, you are going to do it. <laughs> it's like, this is going to cure menopause, buy it. And you like buy 10 of them. So Does yes. the Peloton cure menopause? A regular exercise regimen might work. I actually had my annual physical yesterday with my doctor and he said, are you exercising? And I said, yes, four to five times a week. And he says, yes, that's very helpful for menopause. And I was very proud of myself. There you go. I did not tell him that I'm also eating Little Debbie cakes four or five times a week. <laughs> no, you left that part out. Listen, he doesn't need to know everything. Well, what'd you have for lunch today? Oh, Jesus. I had a salad with chicken and eggs and beets and it was too damn healthy. I, we should have had a beer with salad. I need to balance that <laughs> out. Oh, my God, that was healthy. Yeah, poor Peloton's going to have to work overtime. I took gas eggs just in case. <laughs> Preventative gas eggs. Oh, there you go. Beets and hearts of palm. And yeah, no. Natalie, we've been doing a buttload of webinars lately. Actually, there's no we in this. It is always a we in this because even though you're silent and you're not the face on the webinar, you help me so much in preparing for them. And you're my emotional support, Ginger. And you tell me you can do it. And then you go to work or whatever. <laughs> hey, someone's got to work. Someone's got to pay the bills, right? right? We just did the one for the IWCE Expo. I have one. It will already have passed by the time this episode airs. But for PodFest, which is a podcasting industry webinar, we did one for My Doma a couple months back, which was super, super great. We're doing something for Luann Live this year. I'm not exactly sure what she has up her sleeve, but there's one. I'm doing one for Risa, which is the Real Estate Staging Association on September the 2nd, actually. You guys can tune in into the show notes and get the deets on that. Webinars for us at Wingnut Social have been extremely fruitful, right? Really, really good vehicle for us in getting that know, like, and trust and delivering lots of great information for people to take away, but also keeping us top of mind as the industry experts for social media marketing for high aesthetic brands. I haven't done Oh, no, I take this back. I have done one for Darla Powell Interiors. I did a topic on biophilic design, at least my limited understanding of it and why I love it so much personally. I have not seen any ROI from that as far as clients or anything, but on the wingnut side for sure. But I have not devoted really any time to doing webinars for the design side. So I'm going to ask our guest today, Genevieve Trousdale. If that's something that we should be doing, what do you think? I think she'll tell you uh, all about it because... I think that's what she does. Speaking of Genevieve Trousdale, you guys want to know a little bit more about her? Well, of course you do. 
Let me tell you about her. She is the owner of Circa Genevieve, an interior design company deeply influenced by Southern tradition and French style. Genevieve honed her design sense from taking assignments in Europe, the Middle East, ooh, exotic, and America. Most recently, Genevieve created an online platform called Circa Files. This members-only platform will allow professional designers and other individuals in the design space to share resources globally. To promote this platform, Genevieve started hosting weekly Zoom webinars that are free to the public. Each webinar serves as a teaser for the launch of Circa Files. Hmm, we we'll have to find out more about that, right? Absolutely. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Genevieve Charlesdale to the Wingnut Social Podcast. Hey there, Genevieve Charlesdale. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? I am great today. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Thank you for being a guest. We're eager to dive into the webinars. I was explaining to the uh, audience listening that I have had personal experience with getting some terrific clients from some of the webinars that we've done. So we want to dig in and tell the interior designers and the home pros listening why it would behoove them to do some on their own. Are you game? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's just dive in. Tell us just a little bit about what makes you an expert on this space, and then we'll ask you the first question. You know, it all came about whenever the quarantine started happening across the United States, and I was getting into conversations with fellow designers about how are we going to source for our projects during this time and where we can't go on foot. And it's difficult for shop owners to show us what is in their stores because they can't get in them. So I came up with a one hour series of how designers could really cover a lot of ground for sourcing over the course of, I think we had eight to 10 weekly series. And it really proved to be very valuable for designers because they could just sit down for one hour. You could see lighting collections, fabric collections, hardware, decorative painting. I had all kind of specialty suppliers that really needed some kind of communication mechanism to get to these designers who were still designing for clients. Clients still are expecting us to perform. So I really felt like I could dive into my network of resources that I've accumulated over the past 15 years and just really help bridge that gap. So of the webinars that you've been mostly doing yourself, have they been kind of B2B fellow industry professionals and designers? Or have you also done any client facing? They have been B2B. So anyone could join the webinars. So I'm sure there were a lot of consumers attending as well. But really, my focus was with trade suppliers to designers for projects. So that was the main goal. And how hard was it for you to come up with a new fresh topic every week? A lot of work, but it was also everyone was just kind of looking for something to be uplifting and exciting and positive. There was also this really happy energy going into it every week. And it really kept me going and the community really just relying on this weekly time slot where they could sit down and really be inspired and get work done. But as for the topics, some of them I centered around geographical locations, like I did a New Orleans themed one, which is where I'm from. And that was relatively easy to call up some of my longtime contacts there. And everyone was really excited to participate and connect with new designers and ones that have been longtime clients and they just want to see what's new. We do have a large percentage of our audience who does the B2B stuff, right? They're either vendors or they're design coaches or industry coaches or something like that. So they would get some definite ROI from doing the webinars, right? Because we do here. We're B2B, the Wingnut Social Agency, and they're terrific for building that know, like, and trust, giving, giving, giving some information and keeping on top of mind as a brand and as the expert for when people are ready to hire you or to buy your services or to find stuff for their clients' homes in your case. So I'm trying to wrap my mind around being a decorator or a designer and doing them for client-facing webinars. Do you think there's any meat there? Do you think that that would be valuable for the listeners to do as well? I think there is. The way I structured, it had a completely different focus because it was laying a foundation for a larger venture. But absolutely, I think there is plenty of opportunity to position yourself as an expert in your field or hone in on one niche of the industry and give consumers tips on how to organize or how to create a Zen space or all kinds of things that would inspire trust 
in you. Maybe they want to eventually hire you for a project. Maybe they're not ready now, but in five years when, you know, they're in a <laughs> different a long game. economical situation, <laughs> they, they will remember you and that you devoted so much energy towards helping them in a time of need. So absolutely. I think that's a great way to find clients for designers. I love that you said devoted so much energy into helping them because that really is how you do it, right? You want to present in such a way that you're solving problems for them. I mean, it's obviously you're not going to be able to remodel their house in a webinar, but you're giving them some comfort, you're giving them some help, and they remember you that way. And, and since they're such long form presentations, usually 45 minutes with a question and answers at the end, they are really getting to see who you are, who you're about, how you interact with them as a client, as a potential designer. So I like those ideas. And some of those things are kind of, we take them for granted being in the industry, you know, how to design the Zen space or how to, yes, I'll really go back do. to the old cliches, how to decorate your bookshelf, how to do a coffee <laughs> table. Yeah. But we take it for granted because it comes so easily to us. But clients, they have no idea. You give them light bulb moments every time you put something like that out. I want to know how much time would someone need to set aside for this? I made sure to do test runs with the presenters and I had three to four presenters each week. So I really wanted to make them as quality as they could be. Some of these presenters were overseas in Venice and the UK and Paris. And again, wanted to make sure that they were giving the right information to the audience in a specific amount of time. They each had about 12 minutes to give a little background about themselves and the company and show off their wares because it's really about helping designers explain why this product costs what it does. Usually it's a high cost. So giving them those selling points for them to use in their presentations and accurately showing their fabrics or hardware or whatever it was. So some of it required the presenters putting together little lookbooks or little PowerPoint presentations to best showcase their work. It was um, 75% of my time for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I think we did 10 back to back and then took a break for a little while over the summer <laughs> to catch my breath and focus on some other things. But we really covered a lot of ground and was just really overwhelmed and humbled really by the response of the design community saying how much it helped them and hearing about the sales that happened and just new connections. And that is what brings me so much joy in life is connecting good, talented people. I love that you rehearse with the presenters. That's brilliant. And of course, that's incredibly time consuming. But that's a terrific idea. Like we have some listeners out there who are very reluctant to be video facing or have their face on a screen anywhere. And actually, when I was rehearsing our Wingnut Social webinar, which we did for Wingnut Social in the house, I practiced it with my director, Shana and Karina. And I was like, OK, I just kind of want to do a run through. I don't really want to practice it for real because I was self-conscious about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like because I feel silly being like you're really really presenting it when you're not, you know. And uh, Shane said, well, you know, you can do that. But I found that the best thing to do is to really just practice it and practice it so you're prepared. And they made me, they twisted my elbow and made me do it. And I'll be damned if it didn't come out much better. So if people out there are listening who are afraid of doing one or being on video, just sit and pretend you're doing it live until you're numb to it. And by the time you do it live or even pre-recorded and present it, it's no big shakes. Yes, I completely agree. And looking at the first one that I did and then the 10th one that I did, even me as a host and, you know, I tee up each of the presenters and talk about their work and if I've had a personal relationship with them and it just became way more relaxed and genuine. Yeah. It takes quite a lot for me to release mine because I still get like yeah. crazy stage fright. Natalie will tell you for sure. I do too. <laughs> Do you? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I don't feel so bad. I think that's normal. But the more I do with them, the more I'm, I got this, but I am kind of a procrastinator and I kind of won't practice it and I'll wait till last I minute. I think she's right now, I know this is already going to air before this comes out, but she actually has a webinar she has to record by Friday. She hasn't done it yet. And today's Tuesday. I've only practiced it once. And she's only done it once. I, ha so I haven't had the time. Just saying, she's a <laughs> huge, horrible procrastinator. But how do you get the word out about your webinars? What was your main vehicle 
for that. For marketing them, yeah. I've built up, again, a database over the years of a designer network and vendors. So we had a invitation go out with a Zoom registration. So there was an email channel. And then there was also, of course, social media is king these days. Yes. And so we would post that on our feed. And it was free for the presenters to show their collections. But we said it's going to be a much more powerful and successful event if you guys can also cross promote on your social media account. Or if you have a group of 20 designers, send the invitation on your email account. So that was really successful when all parties were able to send the word out. That's really smart on your part. The email list, it's really important to build that over the years because that's yours. You own it. And I'm sure that was a terrific source for you. That's what we do too. Even for this podcast, and you'll see right before this episode airs is Karina will send you, hey, your episode airs tomorrow. Here's some sharing graphics. Please share that on social. And it gets exponential, right? Because you're sharing it, tagging us. We share, we tag you. Other people find it and they share it. So that's a really terrific marketing tip. When everyone is on the same page with their energy and their attitude about it, and it's just, it's so much more fun that way. <laughs> so I kind of think this might be a perfect way to transition into a platform that you kind of hinted around. We that, told them about yeah, it. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. we did tell them about it, but you hinted around in the beginning. But Circophiles, what is that? Because I had to like look it up, read about it. And I'm like, what <laughs> am I doing? What am I reading? But now it's starting to make sense of these webinars and why these webinars was put into place. So let's talk a little bit about that. And then we can get into what Darla wants to know about the ROI and stuff. Yeah. It takes a while to gel because it is a new concept and it's kind of turning the traditional model on its head a little bit with everything that's been going on for the past, I don't know, I'd say 10 years with the internet. So Circle Files is really meant to provide a platform for professional designers to share resources. It is an invitation-only network for professional designers, as well as verified design students to access a directory of resources on a global scale, chat with design peers all over the world in a forum, and collaborate on projects, meaning designer to designer, not designer to vendor. I really feel like it is important for the community to lean into each other more than ever for projects and will just encourage, you know, the rising tide floats the boat, as well as providing an educational arm in the form of how-to guides and the webinars and master classes and downloadable workflow templates. So really cow. teaching. That's a lot. It is. But again, I have done this over the course of my 15 year career. And so it doesn't feel like I have to completely invent something like this is what I've been doing. I've trained many teams on how to run projects, how to make timelines, how to call out custom furnishings. So it's really giving the emerging designer that's walking into these sophisticated design firms a leg up and telling you what the day-to-day -day practical operations, the logistics of running the business is, which is about 80% of our job. It's not the fun, pretty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds amazing. Do I get an invite or how does one get invited to this? You have to be referred by a member. So I am technically a member, so you could be referred by me, <laughs> but you have a list of credentials that need to be submitted. It's not as easy as typing in your email and a resale number. It is a high-end network. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you well, don't know that. What did Groucho Marx say? He wouldn't be a member of any club that would have him as a member. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, if you want some more information about Circa Files, that's going to be in the show notes at Wingnut Social slash podcast. Okay. Well, thank you so much for telling us. It does sound absolutely amazing. But let's go back into the webinar part of this a little bit. And let's talk about what everybody wants to know. If they're going to invest the time, besides the fact that we all do love to help people, at the end of the day, we have light bills to pay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. We want to know about the ROI. So since you've been doing the webinars with no direct numbers or anything, but how has it positively impacted your business and its bottom line? It has really positioned me as a source of strength, someone that inspires trust in the industry and trust that they can come to this webinar or they can give me a call and ask 
I need a glass supplier. Where can I find that? I'm going to give that to them. It was really giving everyone kind of a feeling of comfort and doing that on a regular basis during the course of this quarantine where everyone was kind of scrambling to find their way. It really laid a nice, solid, even foundation for my Circle Files project. So I would say more than anything, it was just this kind of central source, like anchor to the trade. This could be an off question, but my mind's going back to the pandemic when we all got locked down. Did you ever have any idea or intuition that, hey, maybe I should start these webinars before I actually launch Circa Files? Or was this all because of the pandemic? You're like, let me get out there. Let me be in front of people and lay the groundwork that way. Our strategy was totally different at the beginning of this year. It revolved around in-person events, Legends of La Cienega, High Point Market, Salone de Moble. And so it was much more geared towards networking in that capacity. But I have to say that after doing all these webinars, I reached way more people than I could have flying across the world and I'm sure I would have met dozens of people, but it really allowed me to be consistent with my messaging. And again, this is an efficient way to provide value for your customers. So I think it was more widespread, actually. Right. So there was a silver lining, even though this whole pandemic thing is a pain in the ass and we all want it to end. And of course, it's terrible. But this was a happy accident with the webinars, right? You were finding that, okay, we have to do this because of the pandemic. But it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is actually a very viable working strategy. We can reach thousands and thousands of people with this format. And it's a good mix to include going forward, even when we are doing live events. I'm stuck on them. I'll be doing at least one a month in some way, shape or form. Yes. My webinar strategy will continue indefinitely. Yes. And I think another good point to make is that even though it was a webinar, not you know, kind of like a Zoom meeting where people get to, you know, speak up at any time, I still was able to connect with all of the attendees. I would send them personal emails afterwards. We would hop on a separate call or meet in a separate group. And just the network that I formed from that, it just kept growing and growing. And I met this person who was eventually able to introduce me to this supplier. And now I know about the best Parisian marquetry maker. And it was really valuable in that sense as well. I'm totally stuck on them. And I've said, I make no bones about it from the webinars that I've done. We have actually gotten wingnut inquiries, leads, new clients. That's so awesome. Right. I love it. I love it. And it's warm, fuzzy feelings all around. And I'm thinking about maybe doing one for the design side. The ideas don't come as naturally to me, but I think it is just because I'm like, do I want to style a bookshelf? (laughs) (laughs) You should do what feels comfortable because if it doesn't feel comfortable, it's going to show on the screen. (laughs) Attractive storage for my little Debbie case. (laughs) Genevieve, is there anything that I didn't ask you or if I've forgotten to ask you that you think might be important for the audience to hear with regards to webinars before we get into the what up wing that round? No, I think we covered everything. So now, Genevieve, I have to ask you, are you ready for the what up wing that round? Let's do it. Now it's time for what up wing nut. Wing nut. Wing nut. Genevieve Trousdale, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? I'm going to go back to my roots on this and say a magnolia tree. <laughs> go back to your roots. I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pun intended. I would be a magnolia tree because I've always just thrown around this saying with my family and friends, but I kind of feel like I'm a steel magnolia in a way. Some people have told me that because I have that vulnerable side and I also have this strong independent side of me. And that's really what the movie was about back in what, 1990? You're not that old. Are you that old? <laughs> You know, it's so funny when you said steel magnolia, exactly at the time you said it, I was writing that on my paper. I was going to ask you if you'd seen it. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? I think it would be hashtag got that done. Oh, I like that. It's a kind of a family saying. I'm a very sentimental person, but um, it's a family saying from my great aunt Genevieve. And anytime we would have like a big milestone or accomplishment, she would always say, got that done. 
So it's just <laughs> like kind it. of a inside joke. I love it. If you were a golden girl, which golden girl would you be? Oh, hands down, Blanche Devereaux. <laughs> Dare I ask why? <laughs> <laughs> She was just a spitfire and she said what she thought, but she also had class and such humor and, uh, yeah. And we, we know what else. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a profound effect on you, either personally or professionally. Well, I can tell you the book that's on my bedside table and I have not gotten to the end of it. I'm just terrible about devoting time to read, but I've been reading it over the course of a couple of years. And it's just a good book to turn to when you need just a feeling of comfort and that you're not alone. And it's called Thrive by Ariana Huffington. And she really brought to light how, you know, she had this kind of freak accident that caused her to really appreciate what really matters in life and different ways of becoming successful. It doesn't always have to happen the traditional way. I love that. And that was Thrive by Ariana Huffington. Awesome. Genevieve, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Please tell the wingnuts listening where they can go to find out more about you and about Circophiles. Well, you can go to our Circophiles landing page right now. It's just circophiles.com, C-I-R-C-A-P-H-I-L-E-S.com. And Circophiles on all the social channels, right? It is. Correct. Yep. And when does it launch officially? It officially launches in October to the trade. Oh, okay. So soon. So this will be airing sometime in September. So this is a perfect timing. You're very smart. Very it smart is. marketer. Yes. Well, thank you guys for <laughs> approaching me. And this has been really fun. Same. You have an amazing week. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Natalie and Giraffe. Yes, Carla. What do you think about doing a webinar on the design side? They've really been great for us on the wingnut side. Hey, if you want to style a bookcase, bookshelf, <laughs> bookshelf, whatever, coffee, coffee table. table, or how to pour your own whiskey, go ahead. How to decorate the perfect little Debbie storage area. How to organize your Debbie cakes. You know, you might have to get a little more serious That's pretty than niche. That. Yeah, niche. But, but you might need to get a little more serious. <laughs> no, I think webinars actually are pretty cool. And I really like the fact that Genevieve said prior to COVID that her marketing strategy was just completely different on how she was going to lay everything mm -hmm. out. And it's just interesting to hear all the different stories of the other designers and everything that have to make these changes prior to mm -hmm. what they had thought going into 2020, you know, only one star out of five. But I'm just saying it's just pretty cool that she was able to pivot, able to do that. And it was a light bulb moment. So maybe anybody that's thinking about the webinars like you and your little Debbie cakes, maybe it's something to consider because it will still get you out front in front of your client if you want to try to make it client facing and not do the B2B. We still are technically under some sort of lockdown here. Can't go out to restaurants. Basically, it's all takeout still again. So it may be an interesting spin on the design side. I'll have to think about it. I'm going to run it by our creative director, Rex Rogush. I'm going to give that some thought and see what I think about that. All right. Webinars. Webinars, a happy accident. Happy little accident that we discovered in here. A terrific marketing tool. All right, guys. That's it. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on Apple Podcast or whatever the hell you're listening to this on. We're on Spotify. Hell, we're on everything. I swear. Everything you can get a podcast on. Look for Wingnut Social. There we are. Follow us on social at Wingnut Social. If you need help with your marketing for your business, Give us a call, one eight seven seven wingnut And that's it for today. Nat, got anything else? Nope, so long. See ya. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only your first step. Be sure to head to wingnutsocial.com to reach out to us directly and schedule your free consultation with one of our Wingnut Social Media Specialists to take your business from social mediocre to social media master. We'll see you on the next episode of Wingnut Social, your social media tightly fastened. Hell if I know. It's just my podcast. <laughs> do you think? I think so. What else do you think? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Good boy, Mango.